guys, it's Leo with Family Heritage Living. Um, today, I am getting ready to do dishes. Yay me! Uh, but we've had actually several inquiries on how we do dishes off grid, and I had someone shoot me a Facebook message uh, yesterday, I think it was, so I thought, mm, maybe I'll go ahead and do it now. I was actually going to include this whole thing and when we came up here and how we, um, you know, kept things clean and going without having a, a wood stove. Um, and I was going to include how we do it now. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and show you how we do dishes now off grid. Um, it's not real exciting. It's pretty basic. And it's actually the way I've been doing it since even before we were technically completely off grid because it's the way we did it um, when we lived down in southern Michigan uh, in our gridded home. So this is it. Again, it's, you know, it's not real real thrilling or anything. I mean, it's really basic, but it is a necessity of life. You have to you have to be able to wash your dishes and being in a rhythm is really important, at least for me, because if I get out of rhythm, it just takes me forever to get back into it. Um, lots of times when we're doing a video, Sorry. you will hear like this hissing in the background because for the past 13 years almost or so, um, I have constantly had hot water pans going on in the background. That's to do our washing with, um, our bathing, to do laundry. You know, it's, it's not really a big deal in the winter because the stove's rolling all the time to warm the house. So that's just, you know, it's just an extended arm. It's, it's using our resources that's already there for another job so we don't have to use um, other fuel to heat the water. And it's just, it's, I don't know, it, it's just the way we do it, and it's just the way we've grown accustomed to I'm sure there's a better way out there. I'm sure somebody else off-grid says, well, this is a better way, and it works for them, but for us, this is what we do. Um, we almost always have 20 gallons of water in pans, and then I have a five-gallon reservoir. I do dishes most successfully once a day. If I miss a day, it is a horror trying to catch up, and if I try to do it because of my schedule with everything else that I'm doing, um, if I try to do it more than once a day, it actually seems like more work. It's because you know I don't have running hot water, and down south I had did not have running hot water either, but I did have running cold water, and it's amazing what a difference that makes um, when you have at least running water. So if if I do dishes. Um, it's not just a, a simple thing as, you know, draining your sink and washing out your, your pan and stuff. you got to go through the hole, take the water out, dump it out where it belongs, wash out the pan process again. And it just seems to, to add on. So once a day for me, for the most part, unless I'm doing a lot of cooking, then I, gotta, then I really have no choice but to do it more than once. Um, cannot emphasize enough the dangers of boiling hot water. In warming water like this, it does boil. Now you can get your hot water heater super hot and that can be dangerous too. You know, people have gotten burned severely with it. But because it is something that we do all the time and it's something that I just, I do not become relaxed with. I make sure that when I'm moving hot water that I have nobody around me. If that doesn't, not just the little ones, but the big ones too and the animals. Um, first off, I don't want to end up dropping water on them and scalding them and I don't want to end up tripping over somebody and scalding myself I mean it's just you just really need to be super careful uh, I have gotten burned a lot um, carelessness on my part when it comes to checking to see what the, what the water's boiling when you raise these lids you need to raise them away from you but there have been times where you know I got preoccupied and I lifted it right up and had been on a rolling boil and that steam comes up and burns you. And so that's why, you know, it's it's carelessness there and that's why I make sure that nobody's around me when I'm, I'm moving water because you can get careless but I just try ultra hard not to, to get careless with other people. If it's yourself, eh, <laughs> what do you do? This is my water pitcher. It's I don't even know where I got it. I think we got it from an antique store. Look inside there. Is that side? Can you get that so you can see inside there? This is from, it's it's a lovely orange color from the heavy mineral in our old water down south. Um, our water was so bad down south, it was really, really pathetic. It's no longer um, got a buildup, but it is discolored. And you can see in here, we have 
uh, artesian well water for this but even with that over time just like you would see if you could open up your hot water heater you would see a mineral buildup within there um, just because there is minerals naturally and I don't, I'm not going to wash my water pans every day. So some people say, ooh, just wash it. Well, you know, again, this is these are going like almost nonstop. The stove is on. I almost have at least the pans going for, you know, almost all day. Sometimes the, the hissing will get to me and I'll take them off or if I don't have any uh, need for the hot water at the time. But most of the time, they're just, we've, we've got pans going. So this is my sink. Um, this is actually, Ron and I got this for the the two little ones when they were when Zebulon was born we bought um, this for his bathtub and then we used it for Simi when he was little and then of course Zebulon moved on to bigger and better better things to wash in and then Simi got too big for it so I turned it into my my sink since I didn't have a drain for it and it's you know it's, this is real basic this water actually is not that hot right now sometimes it's so hot that I will put additional cold water in. Just because it's a lot hotter than what would come out of your faucet. This is probably about, for most people, coming out of their faucet hot. And then this is my, I just rinse in here. You know, when I had hot, running hot water before we got rid of our water heater, I would, um, have my wash pan and then I would run hot water like most people do when you wash by hand you run that hot water to rinse those dishes and it's really a waste I mean you're wasting a lot of resources and stuff I think that's one thing that we've learned is how much water as humans um, is a human consumption that we do waste um, we think we need so much and we really don't it just it makes you more aware of the resources the Lord has provided for you and that you know we're responsible for those resources from everything I mean some people would be convicted not to you know use plastic some people would be convicted not to to waste um, gasoline uh, you can't live without water all right and I, I think that when we stop and we realize that modern ninity has given us an habitual craving for um, excess and that's including things that are necessary to our daily life that we can we can appreciate it when we don't have them and realize how much uh, we overuse those things. Um, we are a chemical-free house as much as we possibly can be. Um, I think that anyone that commits or is convicted to live that way can get rid of most things. Um, I think there are still some things though that we've grown we grow accustomed to and we're not sure how to adapt beyond certain certain things that we like in a certain way. Um, some people can't get rid of shampoo or get rid of conditioner or stuff like that, where other people don't have trouble with it or you know using uh, um, olive oil based furniture polish versus um, you know an aerosol you know furniture polish. Some of those it's just easier to do some for others than it is for others to do it. But for me, I've had a hard time adjusting to what would have been um, traditional dishwashing prior to the invent of detergents. We have, um, you know, before the invent of detergents, they would have used soap flakes, they used salt, um, they would have used vinegar in combination of all three. And I have done that. And I have done it and committed myself to doing it for a period of time to see if I just, maybe it's just an adjustment period. I've used salt and I've used the soap flakes and then um, I added the vinegar and what I find would happen is that the dishes would create or have a buildup on it and I thought okay well maybe I don't, I don't dry dishes very often because my water is often so hot that it's like it's like in a dishwasher you know that um, there's no need to the, the heat dries it right away and then you can put them away within you know five ten minutes after washing dry water <laughs> But so I thought, well, maybe it's just be, you know, I'm getting this buildup on my dishes from using uh, the lye soap and or the salt. Um, and it's sometimes, you know, I tried combinations. I tried to do them separately. Uh, salt, of course, is not a detergent. It doesn't cut grease. Lye soap create is what creates the film. Vinegar is supposed to cut it. I, I wash my soap with lye my soap. I wash my hair with lye soap. Vinegar cuts that. If I don't use a vinegar rinse on my hair as my cream... It, that is my cream rinse. Um, my hair will look like I dip my head into a vat of oil. 
And so I know vinegar will take care of that, but it doesn't take care of that on dishes. And drying it did not help. They were not only spotted, but they would get this like off flavor. Um, and so what I use, because it's available, is a detergent similar to this. It does not have to be this particular brand, but it does need to be free and clear of certain things. Um, and it also has to be animal friendly, um, not tested on animals. And I'm perfectly at ease and content using this. Now, if this were not available, because this really hasn't been available that long, the thing that was um, best before this, I believe it was ivory. And it, that's, that stuff left a nasty taste on the dishes. Um, you know, and, they, and for years during the 90s and into the early 2000s, everybody, all these chemical companies thought they had to make it more and more. They had to add colors and then they had to add fragrances and it was like almost you could not get anywhere in life unless you bought those i mean there was no other options except to go with the bar soap and the salt and the vinegar and then this came out i'm totally happy with it i have no problem using it if it were not available i would adapt um i would force myself to adapt somehow i would do more research i can't imagine there was other options for um, dishwashing outside of the soap flakes, outside of the bar soap, outside of using salt as a scouring, and outside of using a vinegar rinse. I, if there is, I haven't seen it. And I have you know, done research on this to find out what they possibly could have used. Um, you know, at different temperatures of water, everything can, can change that, but I never found a variation for it. So that, um, this is what I use to wash my hair with and this is what we bathe bathe with um and i've even used this for dishes but because it is a castile soap which is what you know um, lots of bar soaps are it gives the same end product that the bar soap does um, it gives the film it gives a taste even with the vinegar rinse and with drying so i just i'm done you know trial and error with this i just stand by the free fragrant or gin seven soap but that soap comes in different flavors <laughs> well, this does too lavender <laughs> put your tongue to sleep one of our favorite youtube viewers sent me this some of these beautiful rags you can tell it looks wore out because i use it all the time i had a Thanks, Susanna. I had another viewer. Um, yes, we do have favorites. <laughs> I had another dear viewer send me a knitted one for Christmas, and I absolutely love that one. That one's in the wash right now, though. That's one reason you, I won't show that. Um, oh, that's what I want, something else I wanted to show. Our, this is our washing machine, and you notice it's, it's connection to the stove. So I have the hot water there, and I don't have to risk um, a lot of a lot of travel with the hot water. Same with our bathtub. Our bathtub comes down uh, most often right here between the dry sink and the table right next to the stove. So we don't have a lot of travel time with moving that hot water because it, it is very dangerous. It is something to definitely when you're setting up house in an off-grid situation to keep in mind the heat source. Now not all heat sources are going to be the wood cook stove for water. Some are going to be outside kitchens and stuff but for us this is where it's at so everything has to be in connection to it. All right, so basic dishes. I mean, just like everybody else, you got to scrub them. Make sure all the grud's out, because if you, you don't, the kids will get it, and they'll let you know you did a crummy job on the dishes. And then you rinse. I use a, a clean towel every time, um, because I don't have a drain board on my sink, or I don't have a sink. So I put my dishes on that, and then um, put them away, and then I pull my towel out, and I either... If it's, you know, if the dishes that went on it weren't too much and it's not soaking, I will just let it dry and use it again, or I will throw it in the wash and wait for the next day to get a clean one. Maybe new dishes could be so exciting, did you? But you gained 50 subscribers. It usually is about 50 when we post a video. Really? No, not quite that many. I think we're around like between 5 to 10. Anyway, we do. We gain 12, lose 10. All right, I got you. Plug one of RJ's spoons. Isn't that cool? Right in 
little bit of a So that was it, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks. God bless. I've been looking years for that recipe. What Literally, recipe? seriously, I have Googled it and it's not existed. I have found the missing link. <laughs> Boiled icing. Seriously. And we caught it live. <laughs>